Verse 7 of Luke chapter 3. The reason I want to do that song is because I rarely title the message, but today, because so many in the church mock what I'm going to preach and teach today, I decided to entitle this message, The Great Flyaway. The Great Flyaway. <laughs> One of these days, church, we're going to find out. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, this is John the Baptist, generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee the wrath to come? The old boys didn't make it, you know that? These mockers against the blessed hope, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. Because we've got a lot of professing Christians, a lot of false prophets in our land. How many just noticed that? You know them by their fruit, but also the doctrine they hold to. You add to and take away, the Lord warned, He'd block your name out of the book if you're not real careful. Paraphrased there. So we're not going to do that. There's not enough money to pay me to change God's word for anybody. Amen. And none of us know it all, but we know enough to know what side our bread's buttered on, Mom used to say. But there's, there's some lies out there about, well, the UFOs are going to come and they're going to transport us, you know, uh, and that'll explain the uh, rapture. I don't need a flying saucer to get me to heaven. Amen. <clears throat> right now the world's looking for aliens to come. And it seems like the, the veil between dimensions is thinning and they're more frequent now than they used to be. Well, it doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, they're demonic, so what? On these days, uh, they're going to reap the benefits of their evil. It's not my problem. Amen. But there are those that say, well, we've got to go through the wrath of God to be worthy to go to heaven. Wait a minute. If the crucifixion of God's Son wasn't good enough, we're all going to hell. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, God has not appointed us to wrath, but obtained salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that what the Bible teaches? And yet John says here, who told you to flee the wrath to come? So the wrath of God is coming. The question is, is who's going to fly away and who's going to stay here under the lie of Satan? That's the question. And I blame preachers for muddying the water. We need to hear it just like it is, everybody. Now Jude 18. Let's get right into the Bible. Don't need my opinions. Jude 18. Now that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Everybody say mockers. A preacher, I don't care who they say they are, that mocks the rapture, or what I'm termed today as a great flying away, is mocking salvation. People do not even know what they're saved from. Number one, if you're a Christian, you're saved from the flames of hell. And number two, you're saved from the wrath to come. The wrath to come is a great tribulation period just around the corner. So I question if these people are even believers that deny the blessed hope of the church. Say what you want. Well, the rapture's not in the Bible. Well, the concepts of it is. These mockers, 
are going to eat their words. You know, I may not last very long on YouTube. By the way, shut off the comments. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 3. See, uh, and I've been in this thing too long to let the Antichrist spirit sway me away from the truth. I refuse. We know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. By the way, keep us free as we continue in the truth and the grace of God. Amen. Second Peter 3, 3 and 4a. Where's the promise of His coming? Here's the mockers. Anybody listening? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they are willingly ignorant. I have no time for willful ignorance. You read Romans chapter 1, and you find out that those that are willfully ignorant wound up being destroyed in the flood. Mm-hmm. You see, once we know the truth and the Holy Spirit bears witness to our hearts that it is true, you cannot deny it. Lest you get on the wrong side of the Lord. And that's not a good place to be, everybody. Amen. Suppose believers are not looking for the great flyaway. But preparing for the Antichrist and the beast system that's coming. Oh, I know the Antichrist and the beast system is coming. And by the way, the Antichrist is not Satan. Bunch of idiots. I don't even have time to waste my breath on such stupidity anymore. You can rest assured of one thing. The beast system is wanting to take over big time. Well, does that concern you? Uh, if you make the rapture, it doesn't concern you. But we feel the birth pangs of it, do we not? World War III, just who, who knows? My question, what's it going to take for the church to get back to God and His Word? Now in Matthew 24 and verse 48... St. Matthew, please. And by the way, we greet those that are watching on the internet. It's a tool, but it doesn't take the place of church. Right. Never will. But it's better than nothing, yep. all right, until the Lord provides uh, a, a better opportunity for you. But don't make excuses now, people. Don't make excuses. Right. All right. Verse 48. <clears throat> Jesus said this, and but and if the evil, evil servants are saying in his heart, my Lord delays his coming, well, where's the promise of his coming? You know, and if he does come, uh, there's no rapture, so you've got to face the Antichrist, the mark of the beast. And, and if you make it through the tribune, the seven years of the wrath of God, then you might be fortunate enough to get into the millennium. Such stupidity. I'm through with it. And this servant and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to drink, eat and drink with the drunkards. Does that sound like today? The Lord of that servant, the Lord of that servant, shall come in a day when he looks not for him. There it is. Church is not looking for the uptaker. No. In an era that he is not aware of. You see, the doctrine of the rapture has a purifying effect to it. Because nobody knows exactly when this is going to take place. But I do know it will take place before the first trumpet judgment in Revelation. Amen. So therefore, we're living in chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the book of Revelation still today. Now, it gets tougher in verse 51. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him a portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's hell. 
So it's not once saved, always saved. All these things we've got to deal with, and I want Zion Word Church here and abroad to understand what the Word of God really says. Amen. Amen. Now, on the positive side, of course, it's all positive if you're living right. Amen. Because it doesn't concern you if your name's in the book and you're in the will of God. But it's a warning to those that stray too far or are not saved to start with. That's also a part of the preaching ministry is to warn people. The Song of Solomon in chapter 2. See if you can find it on the computer. It's difficult to find even on the computer. But I got it. Verse 10, Song of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 10. This is why I want to do this song this morning, because it ties in with the Word of God. It was scriptural, even though it's a little coarse thingy. But the Holy Spirit got involved, and that's what I like. I like it, like it, like it. My beloved, you know, turn to your neighbor and say, you're one of those beloved. Beloved. Verse 10. My beloved spake and said to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Wow. Verse 11. For lo, the winter is past, and rain is over and gone. Mm -hmm. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds has come. The voice of the turtle is heard in our land. Hey, it's going to be a good deal. The fig tree puts forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Praise God. It's going to be good, good, good for those that are in the ark of safety, and it's going to be b -b -b bad for those that are not. All Scripture, all through the Bible, the Spirit has told us time and time again what will happen. Much like Noah getting in the boat, and God shut the door, and that was it. He got in the ark, but today Jesus is the ark. If we're in Christ, one day God's going to shut the door, and we're leaving. Yeah, I got leaving on my mind. I've had just about enough of this world. I don't know about you all, but I'm not liking it too much. Well, maybe that's a conditioning factor God will use to get the church dissatisfied with this earth that we're living on. Even though it's a wonderful place, it's still contaminated by sin, and Satan is still the God of this world. We're in war. Amen. But we'll make it. As long as you hold to the cross, glory to God. Well, now let's look at something here. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 39, for those that say there's no rapture, and there's, there's a doctrine, well, the doctrine of the rapture didn't come about until the 1800s. Now, wait a minute. Paul brought it in some 2,000 years ago. They don't know anything. Don't even listen to them, everybody. Acts chapter 8 and verse 39. By the way, you'll never hear me begging and pleading for money on the internet. Acts chapter 8 and verse 39. Now look at this. This is, this is talking about Philip, of course. And when they were come out, out of the water, this is when he baptized the eunuch, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. Caught away yeah. Philip. Amen. That's a type of rapture or being transport, transported from point A to point B. Yeah. Now, the words caught away in the Greek, the word is harpezio, which means, here it comes, to seize, catch, catch up away, to pluck, to take by force. 
Now, i got a side note here, 2 Corinthians 13. 1. Let's see what this is. I, I forgot what this was talking about. Let's take a look at it. Oh, yeah. This is the third time I'm coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let's still have a word be established. So if we're going to set forth a teaching in the church, let it be two or three witnesses or two or three scriptures that are harmonized that are not out of place. This is what we're going to do today. Amen. So that Greek word in Romans, uh, Acts 8.39... Was it was a rapture? What's the difference whether you're transported from where he was to his elders, 33 miles away, or whether we're transported from here to heaven? What's the difference? It's still a rapture. The Greek word implies that it was. Now in 2 Corinthians 12, 2, Paul gave this. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Now, he, he was like us. He walked by faith. He didn't have miracles every day of his life. Didn't drink, you know, orange juice with Jesus every Sunday morning. He spent most of his life in jail. <laughs> I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body. Uh, I don't know. God knows such a one. What? Caught up. Same Greek word. It means the same thing. And I'll repeat the definition. To seize, catch up a wave, pluck, take by force. <laughs> then in Revelation 4, 1, one of my favorite scriptures, it's a different Greek word, but the same meaning. In Revelation 4, 1, John said this, and this hasn't taken place yet, but it shall, not many days hence, everybody, after this I looked, after what? After the church age comes to a close. Behold, the door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was it were a trumpet talking with me, and which said, Come up here. Now, that Greek word is kind of like the last one, but it means, I can't even pronounce this one, antibio something or other. I'm not a Greek scholar, but we can get the definition, all right? This word, these words come up in Revelation 4, 1, means this. To go up, arise, ascend up, rise, spring up, come up. That's what it means. That is the rapture. We know that's the rapture because after that verse, the church is never seen again on this earth. In heaven. And yet we've got people teaching there's no rapture. They don't know what they're talking about. And I suggest you don't let that leaving get in your spirit. By the way, I'll be selling some fried beans here after a while. You can ride this thing out if you want to. In Luke 21, 36 now, that's the mouth of two or three witnesses, everybody. You must accept it. Why do people fight a good deal, huh? Carnality, stupidity, haven't been taught correctly, can't discern, and on and on we can go. To me, this is me talking now, when a preacher denies the rapture, they're sliding what Jesus did for us on the cross. Don't even know what to save from. If they are saved, well, you're judging. Well, you can, you can make a rational decision about what I'm saying. Paul said there's another Jesus being taught and another gospel, and there is no other. But it's almost right, but not quite. That's the way Satan does it. But if you have the Holy Spirit, and you really want to know the straight and narrow way, he'll make sure you're on it. Praise God. 
So we need to begin to look up, everybody. Our redemption is drawing nigh. We need to look up. Amen. Luke 21, 36. Watch you therefore and pray always that you might be counted what? Worthy to escape. What are we escaping from? The judgment that's coming. So I title this The Great Escape. How many watched that movie years ago? Uh, Steve McQueen. Tell him age here. Anybody? All right. On a motorcycle, he was in prison, and he, he jumped over the, the wall, and he escaped. But in like manner, there's going to be a great flying away, everybody. Whether you had accept it or not, it doesn't change one single thing. I suggest you change your doctrine, because as your faith is, so be it unto you. And this is serious. Real serious. Now, I'm not saying we're supposed to, you know, put on a white sheet and climb up a telephone pole and wait for Jesus to come. No, we need to be busy about the Father's business. And all the more so as we see the day approaching. Let us not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. And then much more as we see the day approaching. God takes us very serious. Amen. And we need to. Because, number one, there's going to be people that go to church that's going to escape the judgment of God that's coming on this world for rejecting His Son. And there's going to be people that will not escape, and they both go to church. If you want to stay here, fine. You're not going to change the world. Hmm? Noah didn't change the world. We're not going to change the world. I wished it was so, but it's not so. Because in the last days, perilous times are going to come, and it's going to get, sad to say, worse and worse and worse until there is an emergency catching away. At the last minute, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised, and we shall be changed. Caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yeah. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It is not a comfort for me to hear somebody say, We're going to have to face the mark of the beast and get our heads cut off. It's stupid. I've had enough. Amen. You want to stay here? Stay. You're judging. You are judged by the things that you allow. That's right. That's You're condemned by the things that you allow. That's what the Bible teaches. You see, the problem is the church doesn't know the Word of God. Satan has twisted it with other versions, this and that, and now he's watered it down to where people can't even get saved anymore. When you get saved, it's going to cost you everything. But you'll gain it all in the end. I'll, I'll take that one. Yeah. I'll take that one. Now, the last verse is, is Ezekiel 3.14. Ezekiel. I hope it'll be this way. I can't say that it will, but I hope it will. For all you people that are so stubborn, you won't admit you've been taught wrong your whole life. But if you're saved, born again, I hope this will happen to you. Ezekiel 3.14 And the Spirit lifted me up. Hey, I like that. And took me away. And I went in bitterness and the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong on me. I'm telling you the hand of the Lord is going to get strong on us. Now, this is just a type in the shadow of what's really coming. But the fact remains, Ezekiel experienced a lifting up and a taking away. Can I get an amen from the church? Amen. <laughs> then this one is quite, quite comical here in chapter 8. The 
This one is quite comical. And verse 3. And he put forth a form of a hand and took me by the lock of my mine head, and the Spirit lifted me up. <laughs> Some of you hard-headed people, I hope God has enough mercy and grace to grab you by the nap of your neck, the hair of your head, and take you out of here. I don't want to go that way, but if it has to be that way, I'll, I'll, I'll yes, Lord. Please don't leave me behind. No. Some people are like Lot. The angels had to go in and forcibly drag him out of Lot before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. I hope that God has enough love and mercy and grace to take some of you hard-headed people out of here, but I can't prove it. So, if you don't have any hair, grow some. <laughs> Please. Even if it's a beard, I don't care. Give the Lord something to work with. <laughs> Might as well laugh about it. <laughs> Could you imagine being taken up between heaven and earth by the hair of your head? Daniel fell down prostrate and, and the angel came up and picked him up by the hair of the head. Stand up. Man. 200 pounds pulled up. He didn't complain. No. <laughs> the hint is he was lifted and carried me away. Praise God. Amen. I know the Lord has mercy on us. We don't know everything. You don't know everything. We're students of the Scripture. But thank God we are. We're students of the Bible. But I got enough sense to know one thing. The Lord's coming for a church. Praise God. A glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Wash the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. That's the ones that are leaving. And by the way, they want the Holy Spirit. They have the Holy Spirit. Whether they've been filled or not, the fact remains the Holy Spirit is in every believer and they're the ones getting out. How's the Holy Spirit come in to live? The blood must be applied to your life, number one. We're born again by the Spirit, by the, by the, by, by the blood, excuse me, almost, almost like Sleepy Joe here. When the blood's applied, we're born of the Spirit. Then, He legally comes in to dwell in every son and daughter of God Almighty. And by the way, not everyone is the son of God. No, sons of Adam. In Adam all die, but in Christ all are made alive. So the choice is yours today. I assume everyone here is born again and indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And if you are, don't you dare fight the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues, lest God smite you. Don't you start mocking now the Holy Rollers and the Pentecostals because they enjoy their salvation. What's wrong with you, you old sourpuss, huh? What's wrong with you? Half backslid, calloused? Only sin can do that. You need to repent and be sure you're ready to go when the trumpet sounds because we don't know when Jesus is coming. But I'll tell you this much, He will come. we got to be ready. And I'm responsible to deliver my soul every so often and now I'm delivering it again. You need to sell out. Amen. Repent of things that's wrong. Sinning. Yeah. I can't stop. That's a lie. We're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Now you can't stop sinning on your own power, but the Holy Spirit gives us the power to overcome. Amen. That's, right. That's why He came, to help us. Because we can't do it without Him. I know. Are you ready to meet Jesus? Yes, amen. You know, the sad, sad reality is, a brother or sister may not be here next Sunday. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God if we're not ready. I'll tell you right now, it's a fearful thing. I, I, I have to judge myself all the time. Are we living good enough? Huh? Do we love Jesus enough? I think we need a little help here. I know some of you, you have family that's not serving the Lord.
keep on going on. Jesus didn't come to bring peace but a sword. And the enemies would be that of his own household. So you're in pretty good company, everybody. If nobody wants to be around you because you're a Christian, well, praise God, we're in good company. Amen. Salt of the earth is what we are. And if we don't rub people wrong by our faith in Jesus, then we're no good for nothing. Going to be trodden under the foot of men. No. When you rise up and be strong, we're not going to win people by becoming like them. We need to be different. We are different if we're Christians. Right? Let's stand to our feet. Praise the Lord. Short little sermon today. Do you get the point, don't you? How many gets the point? Lately, I got living on my mind. Soon and very soon, I'll leave this world behind. Praise God. I don't know what's the matter with some of you people wanting to stay here. You plan more for your burial than you do your out resurrection. And yet we're told, well, cremation's not wrong. It is wrong. But it won't stop you from being resurrected. Some people get burned up and ate the sharks and everything, and you know. But the atoms are still there, and God's going to put it all together in one of these days. So either way it goes, we're going to win. Are you ready to meet God? You know, we're supposed to judge ourselves. We're not in the judging business, but we need to judge ourselves, and that is a fact. What is keeping us from the holiness of God? You can't rub your shoulders with the world and expect to have a walk with God. You're not going to touch anybody as a Christian until you first touch God. Then, Holy Spirit will move and operate and you will draw people to the cross. That's the reason the Bible says they that win souls are wise. The beginning of the Lord, the beginning, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. I've delivered the message today. You didn't shout over it. That's okay. Jesus is still going to rapture the church. Amen. There's a people that's prepared. They got their wedding garment on. Glory to God. They got their lamp trimmed and burning. It's full of oil. But the other five foolish virgins run out of oil. And the Lord came. And they said, Let us in. I don't know you. Woo, man. Let us press in today. To be more filled with the Holy Spirit, everybody. Amen. Will you do that much for the preacher today? Trust God to lead you out in the green pastures where you can have some peace, some rest and security in Christ and be filled with His Spirit with power.